Thought I had more Twitter followers than that. I don't know. Probably had to wait out the illegitimate accounts. Right. It's a nice day outside. Alright. Go to my channel. Get to view it. Alright, let's see how we're doing. Okay, come on. Da, 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 da. Alright. So, Ian, welcome to the stream. Alright, welcome to the stream, everybody. As promised, I'm doing a Q&A today. And then tomorrow will be a live reading of the Larry Boy comics. I put comics in air quotes because it's like when you look at the just looking at the covers of each of those comics, it's just like it's poor quality. And that's going to be really funny to read tomorrow. But anyways, today today we're going to be doing a live Q&A, so if you got any questions for me, type it in the comments. And be sure to like the scream and the scream stream. <laughs> like the stream, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to support me on Patreon, go for it. If you want to become a channel member, that's fine. And I also have my Ko-Fi in the description. And you could also follow me on Twitter, which, by the way, is like, oh my gosh, okay, da 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 da, checking my notifications. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got a new wallpaper for my uh, tablet. And also, soon gonna have a wallpaper for my laptop, just as soon as I make some adjustments here. All right, so how have you guys been? What are y'all plans for this weekend? And what's the weather like? I know for the past couple of days we've been dealing with rain. And we actually got hail last night, but not too much hail. Okay, so we gotta rename this Barnaby Riz. And I will explain why once I make this into a wallpaper. Make this into a wallpaper. Yeah, if you saw my if you saw my posts on Twitter, then you would understand. All right, so Matt the cat's in the chat. Oh my God, that rhymed. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, currently animating something. Hopefully, I'll come up with some questions once I'm finished. No problem. Okay, Fairy Tale Hero, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now let me just. Go to my computer settings to change my um, wallpaper. Okay, display. Okay, here we go. Desktop. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just fill it. Oh my God, that's perfect. 
Let me just show you guys real quick. Uh, there he is. Let me adjust the brightness. Oh, brightness. There we go. <laughs> oh my god, adorable. I was watching the Barnaby cutscene again for Billy Bust Up. And for some reason, I paused it at a really good spot. I mean, that was a pretty good pause. That's amazing. So amazing. <laughs> okay, so I tweeted about it last night and let me let me see like the comments for that. Okay, last night I was like, you know, I said I was gonna sleep, but I just had to watch the Billy Busta Barnaby cutscene again. This time I paused it at a good pause. If you ever wanted Barnaby to do a Riz face, then here you go. And I posted a screenshot of it. <laughs> and then this morning, I was like, okay, I slept. Screw it. I'm making Barnaby's Riz face my new wallpaper. And I took a screenshot of what it looks like on my tablet right here. And you guys are loving it. <laughs> Yeah, it does look perfect. <laughs> Alright, so, like I was saying, if you guys got any questions for me, I'll be ready to answer. Because this is, in fact, a Kira and Eric. Uh, Riz means, um... Kind of like uh, trying to put the moves on somebody. It was like, hey, how are you doing? Well, let me let me find out the definition for it. Riz is short for charisma, and it simply means an ability to charm and woo a person. So that's what Riz means. Okay, so here's a question from Ian Sweetney. Do you think you could do a video where you show all of the Viditel's VHS releases you own? Well, not necessarily a video, but I could post it on Instagram or somewhere. I don't know what Gen Alpha means. Oh, by the way, thank you for tuning in, Brayden. Okay, um, Blu-ray Dave is in the chat. Thank you for tuning in. Anyways, like I was saying... Uh, stuff like VHS tape releases of VeggieTales. That could easily be posted, like, on Instagram or on my community posts. I'm trying to figure out what Gen Alpha means. Oh, born between 2010 and the end of 2024. Oh, so that's basically what it means. I think I'm millennial. Early 1980s and late 1990s. Yeah, I was born like in the 90s, so 
Yeah, I'm considered millennial. All right, so I'm having popcorn right now. It's never too early to have popcorn, I'm just saying. I'm looking at my Twitter and yeah, a lot of you guys were um, telling me. <laughs> oh my God, there's this poll that I did on Twitter. And I asked the question, what is VeggieTales doing right now? And I had three options. Either VeggieTales is twiddling their thumbs, like basically sitting there doing nothing. Or they're working on the movie and I have working on in air quotes. And then the third option was sleeping. So either they're twiddling their thumbs, working on the movie, or sleeping. And the majority of people that voted on Twitter said working on the game. Working on the movie, sorry. I'm getting mixed up between movie and game. You know what they should do? Like, have a Nintendo Switch port of the Larry Boy and the Bad Apple video game. But uh, I highly doubt that it's gonna, that that's gonna happen. Even though we want it, the current owners of VeggieTales will not listen to the fans. It's like, they think they know what the fans want, but they don't. So, right now, it's wishful thinking. Alright, so what do we got here? Oh, Cave Cat, thank you for tuning in. By the way, long time no see. How have you been? God, I love that popcorn life. <laughs> Doritos and Pepsi. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, they do need a better CEO. Okay, John Bostick's in the chat. Thank you for tuning in. What do you think of my newest character? Okay, Instagram. Mm. You know, I would promote my TikTok, but I'm just not going to post anything on TikTok until they get things sorted out. Because there's talk of TikTok shutting down. And I even, I even mentioned it on Twitter. It's like... Okay, I got your text, Ian. Let me just look at it real quick. I mean, it's not a heavy loss if, if for me, because um, the, the things I do is like, you know, oh, that's a good character. I like it, Ian. I like it, Ian. Piper's pretty cool. Um... It's not a heavy loss for me because um, I usually post content on YouTube and there's also Instagram Reels. So there's like other avenues for me to make uh, content, to make content, you know what I'm saying? It's like, again, not a heavy loss, but for people that like solely make content on TikTok, it's like, 
surely there's surely got to be like other avenues. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you, uh, I don't know, like to each their own. I, I know it's going to be, it's going to suck for some people, but for other people it's like, okay, well, move on to greener pastures. But for some people it's not that easy. And I, I understand that. But the thing is, um, people want to prioritize, like, the safety of users. So that's kind of why TikTok's going away. And that's from my understanding. I mean, unless, unless TikTok sells their U.S. shares to, like, a legitimate buyer to keep the lights on for TikTok, like, there's nothing we can do. The Christian version of Sony. <laughs> Busy with other things, unable. That's that's okay, Cave Cat. It's understandable. The Thousand Year Door remake is releasing on May, but part of me wants to wait for my birthday to get it just like Pikmin 4. Rallying up the fans to stand up. Yeah, John, I saw I saw your video. That's that's cool. One of your latest live streams. Awesome. So other than the Dark Moon remake, what other games are you interested in? Well, I like to play the Thousand Year Door remake. I'm interested in that. Oh, so you're a longtime subscriber, Blu-ray Dave. Okay, give me one moment, you guys. Yeah, that was Mailman. Okay, so anyways, longtime subscriber, uh, Blu-ray Dave, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Did you see the video? Um, which one was that, Clever Hilarious? Oh, and by the way, thank you for tuning in. been looking at another another series called Threads. It was made by one of Big Ideas employees. Oh, I never heard of that series. Epic Mickey Rebrushed. I've heard of that one too. That was the name of the video. Um, if I did, um, it's probably a while back. Then again, I was busy with other stuff. For me, I would watch the upcoming Garbage Pulp Kids cartoon reboot. <laughs> Love to see a video game of the League of Incredible Vegetables episode. 
Well, they did have a video game for League of Incredible Vegetables at one point. Well, it was a mobile, it was a mobile app. It was a mobile game. The problem with it was the gaming mechanics. I understand it was supposed to be an RPG, but I guarantee you there are a lot of other RPGs that do it right. I was like, that game did not understand, did not understand how RPGs worked. Let's just say you're trying to babysit um, different characters at the same time when you have waves and waves of, anim of enemies. So no wonder that that mobile game got shut down. I mean, I used to play it. So that's why I know all this stuff. Oh yeah, I remember it did the same thing as Larry Boy and the Bad Apple. To where the cutscenes were just actually clips from the from the video. From the League of Incredible Vegetables video. Clips from the movie, you know? Uh, my thoughts on the Larry Boy episodes of the VeggieTales show. Um, I did, I did reviews on all of the Larry Boy episodes of the VeggieTales show. I mean, they were nice, but they weren't perfect. It's not. They're not perfect, and I even say that in my reviews. And when you think about it, it's like the limited time that people at the studio had to make the episodes, they just feel rushed out the door like they don't have time to flesh out a certain stuff. It's like, for example, they, they had like a certain a certain date where they um when they were gonna release Larry Boy and the Cape Coat Caper but then on social media especially on Facebook because that's when they said hey early Christmas present Larry Boy and the Cape Coat Caper is coming out early and it's like yeah it, at first I was excited because that was like the first time in a while that we reverted back to the original Larry Boy costume design because at that point we were so used to getting the Netflix series these shoved into our faces at the time but you know what the novelty wears off like when you actually watch the episode Larry Boy and the Cape Coat Caper it's like uh hmm it's a hit or miss And from what I understood, uh, Cape Coat Caper got released too early. Uh, the Angry Eyebrows Trouble episode was basically a reimagining of the original Angry Eyebrows story from the Cartoon Adventure series. The Emperor of Envy episode screwed up when it came to the, the villain. Because that's not what the Emperor of Envy looked like in the book. Yeah. The Larry Boy chapter books. Like the Emperor of Envy was supposed to have like supposed to be wearing a monocle and a red robe. And they got these two big henchmen. It's like they didn't even do that. It's like, okay, some nerd with glasses. Okay, there's your Emperor of Envy. They screwed up big time on that. And then Menacing Mushroom, that's like, um, I mean, the villain wasn't too bad. It's just that,
What's her face? Uh, Adele Pepper. She's like irredeemable. And she was an accomplice this whole time. It was like when they did this clip show for that Larry Boy theme, the updated Larry Boy theme, where they show uh, Adele Pepper standing right beside uh, the menacing mushroom. It's like, I thought, I legitimately thought that that guy had her hostage. But it's like, no. She was, she was in cahoots with this guy for, for quite some time. It was like, pshh. And like, she was already an unlikable person. Like, slandering a uh, Larry boy, like, in that Cape Coat Caper episode, being so mean to him. She was already an unlikable person. So for her to sign off with the devil, to be like, to be an accomplice to the menacing mushroom, it's like, like you just pissed us off already. Okay, so there was menacing mushroom. So what's the next one? Off Robin's Grudge. That one was okay. It's just that I didn't appreciate uh, the story having Larry Boy be all sad and mopey. Like, he can't do anything right. Oh, he's hopeless. It's like, he won't stop crying and saying, oh, this is my fault. Oh, my God. I mean, it had, that story had potential. Like, you have Awful Alvin doing all these wicked stuff, like, from his jail cell because, yeah, he orders from Amazon on his phone from his jail cell. I don't know how the hell they're able, they allow him to do that. I mean, jeez Louise. So, my thoughts on the Larry Boy episodes of the VeggieTale show, it's like, they weren't given time to bloom. You know what I'm saying? They were rushed out too early. The writing's not good. The animation studio changed, yeah. What was it? Trilogy animations? I mean, there's potential, but when you have studio interference and the CEO breathing down your neck saying, oh, well, this is supposed to be a preschool show or whatever. And that's sad because Phil and Mike were promised, they were promised uh, creative liberty, like creative freedom. And then when they asked for more, it's like, nah, you're fired. Go away. So that's basically what happened. No one is in Spider-Man to me as a serious call. Identifying luck more being a best starter. Winning Mario Party. RPGs aren't really my kind of genre. More of a 3D platformer. Did an episode of Mario Party since seeing you have experience in that game, I figured you might be interested. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Does anyone here remember any moment in VeggieTales where characters would have question marks on their mouths? <laughs> Sounds interesting, though. <laughs> which of the VeggieTales show... Um, which episode... Which Larry Boy episode of the VeggieTales show was a decent one? Or was more forgivable? I'd say the awful... Uh, no, not awful Evans Grudge. That came close, though. But the angry eyebrows reimagining was a lot more forgivable. One of the reasons is because they actually, like, 
Awful Alvin went from hand drawn to CG. I feel like they did the impossible, like for once. But you know what? I want them to do the do the impossible all the time. And that's what I want with this Larry Boy movie. They need a They need to dig deep and give us the wow factor. Like they need to impress us with this stupid movie or else it's going there's going to be problems. And you might be saying, well, the movie's not even out yet, so why are we going to judge? Well, and I've explained this before. I've explained it before. It's like, if you've been following the the VeggieTales Big Idea NBCU lore so far, which I have, I've been following it for years. It's like, they don't have a good reputation right now when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to the fans. In order to rebuild that relationship, you gotta make things right. And I see Tian in the chat. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, I see a good question. I see a good question. What would happen if Barnaby Ghost Owl was a ghost character in the Luigi's Mansion series? Oh my god. You know what? Got a collab like Nintendo and Giddy Goat Games, the people that are creating Billy Bust Up right now. They need a collab at some point. <laughs> Especially when it comes to Luigi's Mansion. And with that uh, Dark Moon remake coming out soon. That'd be so cool if Barnaby was in that was in the Luigi's Mansion lore. I could see a boss battle happening. Okay, which fictional world has the best art style? Well, it's kind of a tough question because I've seen a lot of fictional worlds. I grew up with with movies, video games, TV shows. I think the most recent world or worlds would be what they're coming up with with Billy Bust Up. And from what I understand, um, and I was watching a live stream of the Billy Bust Up game devs working on the game, and one of them, their name's Katie, they were talking about um, wanting to rework uh, Barnaby's mansion. And I was in the comments typing, Oh, that sounds like a great idea. And then they went on to say, "Is like, uh, Barnaby's Mansion is not their best work. I mean, for what they did at the time, like, they were trying to put together, like, a promo and a build, a demo for their publisher and for uh, their Patreon members. It was like, they needed something, so they put it together. And for what they come up with, what they came up with so far is like it's incredible but i understand if they want to rework something like uh barnaby's mansion because 
Hmm. Because with Barnaby Ghost Owl, like he has the ability to bend reality and make things happen. It's like, boom, this happens and this and that. It's like, it's so incredible. The character itself is super, super incredible. I mean, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if I said this to you, said this to you guys, but I'm supposed to be getting a plushie because like back in November, uh, Billy Bustup did like this campaign uh, where uh, they were selling these limited edition Barnaby Ghost Owl plushies from Makeship. And it was supposed to glow in the dark. And I was like, oh yeah, I would definitely buy that. So they met their goal when it comes to how many plushies that they sold. And they reached their goal within 24 minutes of that campaign going live. So with the latest campaign that they're that they're doing right now, now they want an orchestra to replace some of the music. Well, to replace the instruments of some of the music so that, it, that the music sounds more cinematic. And they even have a video on their uh, YouTube channel where they talk about their uh, campaign. It's called Backer Kit. It's not called Kickstarter, but it's, it's called Backer Kit. It's similar to Kickstarter, but you get the idea. And they got all these amazing perks like um, prints, digital or physical prints of some of the artwork. They also have keychains and they also, uh, you can have characters do voice requests. Though they had to cut back on uh, the voice request for Barnaby Ghost Owl because that one was getting a whole lot of, of voice requests, which is totally understandable. But for me, I'm going to be getting a keychain. Barnaby Ghost Owl keychain. So what I plan on doing when I get the Barnaby Ghost Owl plushie and the keychain, I plan on doing a video uh, showcasing the stuff that I got from the campaigns. Now, originally, I was supposed to get the plushie uh, sometime this month, but there was like a delay, which is understandable. It's just one delay. So, um... So that's been pushed back to next month, this coming month. So that's something to look forward to. It's like, I can't wait to hold that plushie in my hands and say, oh my God, here he is. So that'd be cool. Well, the CEO of NBCU and Big Idea thinks it's a preschool show, but it's actually not. And Phil Vischer explains that in the Ultimate Unofficial VeggieTales podcast episode with Finn. I still can't believe Finn actually got Phil Vischer on his show. You, it's like Finn got him on his show. Oh my God, Lee. Yeah, that was a great, that was by far the, one of the best episodes of the Ultimate Unofficial Ready Tales podcast. So go check that out, like, later on or whatever. Hmm. Alright, so my thoughts on the Super Mario Bros. movie. Well, at this point, you guys have heard about the sequel coming out. Well, being in the works. And the projected release date is April 3rd of 2026. I can't wait to see what they have in store. You see, I have more faith in the Super Mario Bros. movie sequel than I do with the Larry Boy movie. Because look at what Big Idea NBCU is doing and look what Nintendo slash Illumination is doing. Big difference. 
at least Nintendo and Illumination know what the fans want. And Mark, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> So there's a big difference. And you know what makes that difference? The fans. It's like we like what we see. And don't bump it to the camera, be me. <laughs> We're like what we see when it comes to Nintendo and Illumination. Why can't VeggieTales Big Idea slash NBCU do the same? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm really glad that there's going to be a sequel to the Super Mario Bros. movie. Yeah, I think it's well earned. And it... Yeah, I had a great time when I saw the first movie. So, it's pretty good. It's like, um... Actually, Veggie Tales is for preschoolers. I highly recommend watching more grown up shows because you're an adult. <laughs> I refuse to believe it's, uh, Veggie Tales is just for preschoolers. Yeah, it is not for preschoolers. There's something for everyone when it comes to Veggie Tales. I mean, geez, Louise. Yeah, some people just don't get it. Okay, Clever Hilary is going to make lunch. Well, you have a good lunch. Not only really that, but Nintendo has been a banger when it comes to releasing games. 2023 was an incredible year to be a Nintendo fan. And the VeggieTales. You're the Asha of the VeggieTales fandom wanting to stand up to Leslie, who's King Magnifico in this situation. Obviously, the JB plush is star giving back all of the faves wish all the fans' wishes from Leslie. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Junior Boy Plus, you should be the CEO of Universal. <laughs> Mark Hart wrapped up its DLC, the remake of Super Mario RPG, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and then there's Pikmin 4. Yeah, I agree. Um, 2023, last year, was a pretty good pretty good year for Nintendo. So that's why I keep saying support companies that care about you and what you think because at the end of the day they're doing stuff right and they're treating their fans with respect you know what I'm saying the fact that she said that video tells us a preschool show is just a bunch of baloney with mustard Meaning that it's complete nonsense. That's why petitions exist to try and change things for the better. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't. Um, when news broke out that Phil Vischer and Mike Naraki were fired from Veggie Tales, 
It's like, I remember people creating petitions, change.org petitions, to try and to try and get Phil and Mike back into VeggieTales, but none of those petitions have worked. It's like, when has there been a change.org petition that actually got stuff done, made things happen? It's like, we can make all the petitions we want, but the, but it's so obvious that the company, uh, Big Idea, NBCU, they're not going to listen to us. No matter how many petitions we write, no matter how many times we bark up their tree. So that's when you know that they're ignoring the fans because it's like, we've been telling you this for, for some time now. But you've ignored us. You. Yeah, petitions are pointless at this point because they don't they don't get stuff done. Yeah, I like what my koozie says. Today, I choose joy. I choose joy in pretty much anything and everything I do. Because it's positivity. Yeah, I'm just checking something real quick. So if I was to create something like a show or any type of product, I would like to have a really great relationship with with the consumers, with my fans. I I never want to ignore them. I never want to upset them. It's like, it's a part of like, that. I mean, that's life, you know? If you're a content creator and if you create stuff, then you want to be able to have that really great relationship with your fans, with your consumers. I mean, it's important. And that's one of the reasons why I always, that I go on and on and on about um, Billy Bust Up. Because they're, they're the ones that are doing, it, doing things right. I mean, they're an indie game, they're an indie gaming studio, but at least they're doing something right. They're being nice to the fans, they're giving us goodies, and it's like when they, like in their Patreon, they're giving you perks, and when they do these campaigns, like the one they're doing right now, it's like, 
it's like you get di this if you donate to this you and all and it's like yeah and when they do their live streams they appreciate people tuning into their live streams and they're super super nice So, yeah, the way I see it, Billy Bustup, the gaming devs of Billy Bustup, they're the gold standard when it comes to having a great relationship with the fans. So, why can't Big Idea and NBCU meet that gold, that gold standard and be like, hey, we're listening to you fans. We care about what you think. Let's create stuff so that you guys are happy. Because at the end of the day, we're creating entertainment for you. And I know why I did this. <laughs> it was like, I meant to do this. Billy and Hat Kid. Friends or foes. You know what? I see them teaming up. Because at the very least, uh, Hat Kid's not teaming up with, uh, with Mustachio. Mustache girl. Well, without spoiling it, it's like whether you think um, Mustache Girl is good or bad, either way, that character is a real piece of work. And that's all I gotta say about that. At least Billy would be a better friend than Mustache Girl, a better partner, so to speak. Okay, anything to get my gym back. <laughs> okay, so QXV. Sorry if I butchered your name, but here we go. Hi, LBF. I've been thinking about getting Dolphin Princess. Do you have anything to say about it? I'd like to know more. And has Larry Boy Veggie Tales shaped your writing? Oh, that's definitely a good question. Um,. On BarnesandNoble.com, I have a book series. It's called Dolphin Princess, and it's a it's a novel series. It's it's fantasy, um, yeah, it's fantasy. Um, yeah, I like to think that. Um, well, first and foremost, I grew up reading books. Books was like, books was my escape, and I liked reading. So, that was part of, like, my inspiration for writing A Dolphin Princess. Because I loved just fantasy. Anything and everything fantasy. Um, some of the things that shaped my writing was some of the things that I would read. Uh, Harry Potter was a, was one inspiration. Um, and there was, like, movies that I, that I watched that shaped my writing also because like I said I grew up uh, watching movies shows reading books and playing video games so the media that I would watch it's like yeah I <laughs> that's part of why I became a writer because I want to create fictional worlds now it's been a while since I did any more writing because I've been busy making content but yeah if you're interested in buying the Dolphin Princess series then check it out on barnesandnoble.com yeah exclusively at barnesandnoble.com that'd be really great So, Dolphin Princess is about uh, this young woman. Um, it's set in the 1920s. So, it's like in those uh, roaring 20s where 
It was like a lot of great stuff happening. Um, if you've if you read The Great Gatsby, then you would you would know like the certain vibe. You would know what the setting was like in this time period. So this young woman uh, grows up thinking that she has these rich parents. But then she has like a boating accident. Like she falls into the water and she transforms into a dolphin. And then she meets up with these, um, with these other characters. A dolphin, a talking sand dollar, and a whale. And another dolphin. It's like she realizes, oh my gosh, I'm of dolphin royalty. I'm, I'm the lost dolphin princess. And then there's this giant eel, this sorcerer eel. He's a big monster and he was responsible for, for killing the dolphin princess's real parents. So, yeah. Yeah, there's like three books in the series so far. Um, I need to think about writing a fourth book. Yeah, if I do a fourth book, then it'll be like the, the epic conclusion. But I would have to revisit uh, the books myself, read what I got in my notes, gotta find my notes, and then come up with a fourth book. A female version of Aquaman. <laughs> well, she's not a superhero. It's just like she... Um, she transforms. She's a shapeshifter. Language is very satisfying. Why, thank you. Three, OMG, I need to read them. <laughs> yeah. You need to check that book series out at some point. I mean, that'd be really great. I'm also thinking about doing another book series, but I need to figure out what that next book series is. I mean, I've been... Tossing around some ideas, but I just need to figure out what'll stick to the wall. Not this wall, but like a metaphorical wall. Thanks, Blu-ray Dave. Yeah, I still got some popcorn left. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Hmm. Forgot what I was going to look up on my phone. Anyways. If you got some more questions, put it in the chat. Now for my Veggie OC, the avatar that you, you now you guys would see, especially in the profile picture that I have here on YouTube. My Veggie OC is supposed to be a rhubarb. Think of it as Petunia Rhubarb and Larry Boy all smashed into one. Yeah, I see myself as a rhubarb <laughs> for my Veggie OC. Yeah, like Petunia Rhubarb.
Alright, so Cave Cat's gonna make lunch, so you have a great lunch. Yeah, as much as we want Larry and Petunia to to be a couple, it's like, well, right now they're just friends. And I think Mike Naraki said that in an, in an interview one time. Forgot what interview that was, but he was like, well, Larry and Petunia are just friends for now. I mean, yeah, I mean... They make a really good couple, but it's like, okay, well, they're just friends, so we'll have to deal with that fact for now. If I was ever to dye my hair purple, then it would have to be like close to my natural hair color because there's a right way to dye your hair a certain color and then there's like a wrong way so we got to do things right if I was ever to dye my hair then I need to make sure that I'm doing things right go see a professional that's for darn sure all right so more gaming vids of Odyssey Pikmin in a hat in time yeah, that, um, Hat in Time is in the, is still in the works. Like, I've already filmed, uh, the next part of Hat in Time. Now, for Odyssey, it's like, yeah, I would like to do more Odyssey. It's just, I gotta film some really great stuff. Because I don't want to bore you guys by, like, doing random stuff on Odyssey and like nothing happening like a boss fight like I want to be able to I mean make sure that the gaming videos are entertaining enough because I noticed in my uh in some of my gaming videos like they don't hit a hundred they don't hit a hundred views so it's like okay are people interested in my gaming videos or do I need to move on to something else but Odyssey, more Odyssey's coming. More Hat and Time's coming. And Pikmin 4. Um, yeah, Pikmin 4 is doing doing pretty good. Just need to, like... I know, like, there's some leaf lanes that I gotta compete against. So I'll probably get that on film. Because we gotta rescue some more people. We gotta find our pilot, we gotta find Olimar, we gotta find other people, so. Yeah, as far as gaming videos, um, yeah, they're still, they're still coming. I'm still gonna do gaming videos, I mean, even though it might not get a lot of views, I'm still gonna do it anyway because some of you guys like my gaming videos. Oh, Angel Cat's here. Thank you for tuning in. I've always liked Spider-Man and Gwen, Gwen Stacy. They're friends. I love that. Have you ever, ever, ever heard anything about a universe called the Monsterverse? I have actually never heard of that. It, like... Was it something that you came up with, or is it a already established thing? Try collecting as many moons as possible. Exactly. What's your favorite non-Larry Boy VeggieTales episode? I like to think that, um... Where's God When I'm Scared was a pretty good episode. Because... That's why I put VeggieTales on the map. I mean, the animation's not perfect, but for what how they started the whole series, and yeah. I have a lot of respect for the 
the first Veggie Tales episode ever. That's always going to be my favorite. Because that's like the w one time, if not multiple times, when Phil Vosher and Mike Naraki had the most creative freedom. And it shows. It definitely shows. Yeah, the experimental animation here is pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good, like, for the time that it was. It was pretty good. It wasn't perfect, but it was good. That was 90s animation for Big Idea at the time. Limitations, um, are you talking limitations in general or for like a certain topic? The music in my outro, well, that depends because I usually use all kinds of um, music from the from YouTube or YouTube Creative Studio Creator Studio. That's what it's called. They're free to use. Sometimes I, I use, um, like there's like certain, um, type of music that I use, um, for my outros. Cat Circus is my, is one of my favorites. And sometimes I would use a song called, um, Swipe C Cakewalk or Jasmine Blues. It's like you can find those songs on YouTube Create Studio. Oh, limitations in games, shows, or movies. In other words, do you agree that working around them can make something good or something? Um, well, sometimes limitations can be good, and sometimes limitations can be bad. In a case where limitations are bad, it's like something goes on, it's like, oh, well, they could have done this. They could have made the backgrounds better. They could have made the characters a lot more believable so I guess it depends on like the story and the characters and stuff like that I think there's some points where you can cut corners and then other times where you where you gotta actually do something you know you know what I'm saying <laughs> Sandwich God, when is Larry Boy Fanatic the movie dropping? <laughs> that'd be a that'd be a fun idea for this channel. <laughs> uh, Microwave Society. I've reacted to a couple of their videos. Actually, I've reacted to their Larry Boy video, and that was that was super funny. It's like Microwave Society is one of my favorite YouTube channels right now. Yeah, they're pretty good. 
Okay, so for video editing, what software? Um, for video creation. Um, well, fun fact, I used to, I used to use iMovie. And I would uh, edit my videos using my tablet here. But since my iPad is out of date and I can't download any more updates for iMovie, it's like at the time I just had to scramble and figure out like how am I going to edit my videos. Luckily I came across CapCut, which I was able to download onto my computer and using it, it's pretty good. It Using CapCut on my computer reminded me of the of the days when I was using Windows Movie Maker. It works similar to Windows Movie Maker, but it's got all these effects, these sound effects, these visuals. I, I love using CapCut. It's really good for video editing. It's free. Like you don't need to get the, you don't need to buy the premium version if you don't have the money for it. So yeah. So, yeah, CapCut is available on PC, and there's also a mobile app. But I usually, but I use CapCut on my computer. Now, as far as audio, I use Audacity. That's how I record my audio, edit my audio. Now, as far as art, um, I use Microsoft Paint, and I use Paint 3D, and most recently, I've been using this app called Sketchbook on my tablet, and it's really, really good. Noise. They forgot to react to the Bad Apple. Yeah, I would like Microwave Society to react to the Bad Apple episode. That'd be really cool. So they reacted to the Lord of the Bane's episode. They reacted to the Jonah movie. They reacted to the Larry Bird movies. And they also reacted to the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything movie. Yeah, have a day. <laughs> okay, Ebus Paint X. Like, is it free to use? Uh, free trial period. Prime membership if you want to remove the ads and unlock Prime features. Yeah, I've been using Sketchbook and I haven't ran, ran into any ads. Yeah, for a few hours. So 
so we've been streaming for more than an hour now. That's good, that's good. Yeah, I like that sketchbook. Um, lets you draw and color in layers. Yeah, I started figuring out using like utilizing layers and making making things happen. I I know you made it, Jamie Plus, but but where but when did you make it? Okay, so when did I make JB Plus? Huh. Let me look at my TikTok video. Oh, and by the way, JB, uh, Junior Boy, thank you for tuning in. Hello. Hey. <laughs> I gotta scroll down. Okay, so it was back in March of 2022 when I came up with the Junior Boy plushie because at that time I started talking with uh, Junior Boy and I was, as I was inspired by his animations, his work. Love your work. <laughs> He's such a great guy. So I decided, hey, since I have a Junior Asparagus plushie, and I'm pretty good at sewing, so I sewed up a Larry Boy suit, put it on Junior Asparagus, and voila, we got Junior Boy plushie. So yeah, it was back in 2022, March. And now that I think about it, now that I think about it, it's like, had this plushie for two years. I'm two years old. Yay! Two-year-old junior boy plushie. <laughs> the iconic JB plush. <laughs> I like when I hold the junior boy plushie. It's like, it, it gives me comfort. He gives me comfort. <laughs> People are like, happy birthday, JV Plush in the chat. <laughs> it's happy birthday to moi. It's like, can I climb a tree? Yeah, there's a there's a tree outside. Yeah, there's a tree outside. We'll put you on a tree. Can I be upside down? Yeah, why not? Like, for some reason, sometimes his eyes get stuck, like, on the sides or whatever, like this. So that's why he makes his derp 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 eyes. And it's been like a, a running gag with this, with this monito. What's monito? It's Spanish for doll. Yeah. Okay. 
That's right. Happy birthday to me. No, where's my presents? <laughs> <laughs> the most realistic character. Yeah, I gotta remember March 20th, 2022 was when I uploaded the TikTok of the June Boy plushie reveal. <laughs> yeah, so like I was saying, during that time, I was getting to know a junior boy, and I thought he was a cool guy, so I decided to make a junior boy plushie, make a plushie based on uh, his Veggie OC. I know his Veggie OC is, is different now, but mm, this was what he looked like back then, so... Yeah. The Larry Boy OS, OS original soundtrack was good. Yes. Okay. Okay, Junior Boy asks, what's your, besides the Larry Boy episode, which Betty Tolls episode is your favorite? Um, I think I said earlier that, um, it was Where's God When I'm Scared? Because it's got like that, I mean, not only was it the first episode of Betty Tolls, but it's like, if you were to ask me, like, what episode... Did Phil and Mike have the most creativity in when it came to vegetables? Then that was it. Because, yeah, their creativity was oozing out of that episode. The very first episode of vegetables, the one that started it off, I mean, animation's not perfect, but the stories were great. And what they did at the time, that was really neat because. They were a small team back then. And for what they come up what they came up with was really good. It was really, really good. So yeah. I hold that episode of Eddie Tells dear to my heart. Where's God when I'm scared? Because that goes to show, like, you didn't have much back then when it came to creating something. You wanted to create something that was going to be revolutionary. And one day you would look back and say, yeah, we created the gold standard for Christian kids programming for Christian's kids videos before corporate took over. So I think the legacy of Eddie Tills shines in that episode. Okay, so QXV asks, why is Barnaby Ghost Owl your favorite? I don't know much about Billy Bustup. Well, Billy Bust Up is an up and coming game that's being developed right now. And Barnaby Ghost Owl 
first and foremost, he's voiced by the talented Black Griffin, Gabriel C. Brown. Now, Gabriel has his own YouTube channel. Black Griffin has his own YouTube channel. And he writes songs. He makes music. He's very entertaining. And the fact that he was able to let all that shine in his character in Barnaby Ghost Owl, it's so, so amazing. And he actually commented on one of my, uh, one of my tweets, like when I was, like when I was talking about how I liked how Barnaby's facial expressions, like when he laughs and is like, <gasps> <laughs> I, I screenshotted that part and, <laughs> and Black Griffin liked my tweet. <laughs> Yeah, but um, Barnaby Ghost Owl, he's so, he's so amazing. I mean, there's like a, yeah, you watch the Barnaby cutscene um, from Billy Bust Up. In fact, I reacted to that cutscene, so you could check that out anytime you want. But like the character and the animation, the, the design of the character is so awesome. And yeah. Eh. Yeah, and you know what? I can't wait to get the Barnaby Ghost Owl plushie and the keychain. That'd be so cool to show off in one of my videos. Okay, Splatfest. Uh, for those of you who play Splatoon 3, uh, there's going to be another Splatfest starting tonight. So... Yeah, Matt, I definitely want to, yeah, once again, time to collab. Let's do it. Yeah, I already picked my team. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, for Splatfest, it's music-themed. And you get to pick between drums, guitar, and keyboard. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this Splatfest because the previous Splatfest, would, which had to do with weekend days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, eh, it wasn't it wasn't a really good theme. And plus, I thought Friday was going to be Fry's team, but it ended up being Shiver's team, which I I screwed up on. Because I thought Friday was going to be Fry's team. But it was actually Shiver's team. I mean, I have nothing against Shiver. It's just that my friend Matt can't stand Shiver. <laughs> uh, Fry was actually Saturday. And then Big Man was Sunday. And you know what? You know what's funny is that when I participated in Splatfest for Friday, Saturday, Sunday... That theme, the weekend theme or whatever, it's like my my team, like Team Friday, ended up like it kept getting matched with Team Saturday. So we were almost always playing against Team Saturday, but there was like a couple of rare occasions where Team Friday was battling against Team Sunday. But most of the time it was Team Saturday that we were up against. And then, spoiler alert, um, that Splatfest, Team Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or whatever, it looked, it looked like Team Saturday, Fry's team was gonna win, because it was like, they had like a popular vote or whatever, but when they combined everything all together, Shiver's team, Team Friday, ended up winning. And yeah, keep in mind, I was Team Friday. Because I mistakenly thought that Fry was going to be Team Friday. So, whoops. That was like the first Splatfest I ever won. Even though I ended up picking the wrong team. Again, oops. 
Sorry, Matt. He's like, OMG, I want to look into Billy Bustup. Yeah, you should. You definitely should. Um, like I said, the the game devs are super cool. Like they at least they have a really great relationship with fans. You're you're gonna love their streams, you're gonna love like the stuff that they have to offer. I mean, the game has been in it's been a work in progress for for almost seven years now. They're getting close to that seven year mark. But at least they're doing things right. They're showing you, hey, we're working on the game. And we got perks. And we got stuff like this. So, yeah. Go check out Billy Bust Up. And show your support. Like, in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't matter. It's good. If Pixar animated VeggieTales... Uh, it's unlikely. I mean, yeah, since VeggieTales is supposedly Christian, I don't think Disney would touch it with a 10-foot pole. Okay, so let me, let me get caught up in the comments. Okay, so Matt, uh, Splatfest. Uh, yeah, I believe I picked, yeah, let me, let me check real quick to see what team I picked. All right. Yeah, at least I got a win. Yeah, I, I didn't want to disappoint you, Matt, <laughs> by accidentally picking Shiver's team for the weekend theme. Yeah, I'm trying to get past this uh, Splatfest uh, broadcast. It's like every time you fire up the game, they have the Splatfest news, their news channel. Current stages. I don't do Anarchy Battle. I don't. I don't do Rainmaker or Clam Blitz or whatever the shit it's called. <laughs> so, the main uh, modes I play are Turf War. And Salmon Run. Though I have to admit, Salmon Run is pretty cool. It's pretty fun to, <laughs> fun to play. Splatsville, that's a wrap. Okay, Shiver and Fry, big man. Let me show the people. Okay, so these are the themes... I don't know if you guys can see. Pretty much, there's drums, guitar, and keyboard. So, for this one, I picked key... Not keyboard. <laughs> oh my god, wake up! I picked guitar. It says, you joined this team. Guitar. And why did I pick guitar? Because, well, I listen to Metallica. And they have a pretty good guitarist. Hmm. Oh yeah, it starts tonight. Uh, 7 p.m. I assume it's uh, 7 p.m. Yeah, it says 7 p.m. It'll probably say something different on your end. Like... For everybody else, this is central time. Gotta go pick up the cat from the vet. It's been fun. Well, say hi to your cat for me. They're so adorable. Alrighty, so Matt, you have a great day. 
Have a great day, bestie. Bro, first. <laughs> Okay, Have you ever played Little Nightmares? Um, I've heard of Little Nightmares, but never actually played it. But I've heard great things about it. Okay, I'll only pick Shiver's team if I agree with what side she's on. I love Six Escape. Guitar. Interesting choice. My cat's name is Toothless. Oh, you mean like the like the dragon from um, How to Train Your Dragon? Bless you. Alright, I'm looking at the time right now. It's 118 Central Time. Alright, so I think I got time for a few more questions. And I just want to remind everybody that tomorrow's live stream is going to be about the Larry Boy comics. We're going to be doing a live reading. I think there's like... Well, let me show it to you guys real quick. Show you the comics. And there's a little preview of what to expect in tomorrow's live stream. So if you have any other questions for me... Put it in the chat while I grab the comics to show you guys real quick. Alright, so it's been a few years since I got these. These are the comics. Oh, look, it's so riveting! Look at that! Wow! Wow! Look at that! So artistic! So amazing! <gasps> it's like, no, don't leave. I wanna I wanna bring all the fans in here. Where are the fans? Hello? Yeah, that should be fun. That, it's definitely going to be fun. Because, I mean, look at that. This is just lazily put together the artwork and... Golly. It's like, you call these comics? It's like, look at how lazily drawn a lot of this stuff is. And then this page is like no dialogue, but you could tell they're having fun, right? Look, oh my god, Alfred looks horrible. Alfred or Archie or whatever, he looks horrible. Yeah, we're gonna talk a lot about that, like in tomorrow's live stream, okay? Yeah, a five-year-old can definitely draw better than that than this. I can draw better than this. I mean, they should have hired me to do the artwork. One of these. What are these? They're comics. Oh, comics. They're not the good comics. Never mind.
It's like, what are these? They're garbage. <laughs> Grab the torch. Boom! Let's burn these comics. Well, not in here, silly. And plus, we need it for tomorrow's live stream. Boy news on live stream. No, we can't do that. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, YouTube will not be happy about it. <laughs> Grab a metaphorical torch and light them up. <laughs> Anyways, it'll be a fun stream tomorrow. And you know what? We should do the, we should do a vote. Like when I get off stream here, I will uh, When I get off stream here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And a community tab lets you put up up to five options. Even though there's six books. So, in a little bit, on my community tab, I'm going to ask you guys which book you want me to read first on tomorrow's live stream. So, that's going to be interesting. Oh, hi, YYC. How have you been? Long time no see. It's like, those comics need to go to the shame jail. Alright, so like I was saying, I got time for a few more questions. Just wanted to remind everyone that we're going to be doing a live reading of the comics. Of the quote-unquote Larry Boy comics. So excited for the streams. Why, thank you. <laughs> I try to make my streams interesting. Okay, so here's a question. Did you watch the new Five Nights at Freddy's movie? Uh, no, I have not. I mean, I want to, but, uh, I don't have a subscription to Peacock. So there's no way for me to watch the film. And I wanna, I wanna avoid spoilers. Imagine if one of the guys from Microwave Society popped up in here. Yeah, that would be super cool if they did. I would tell them, hey, I'm a big fan of your channel. And you know what would be so interesting? You know, if it was, I, don't, I don't think it'll ever happen. But what if Microwave Society, I collabed with them to react to the Bad Apple episode? I mean, it's, uh, it sounds interesting. It sounds fun. I wonder if they'll do that. Because that will be fun. But I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Yeah, they're... Yeah. If they're busy doing other stuff, then that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Yeah, I myself am busy with uh, other things too. That'd be cool, though. Like, them just reacting to the Bad Apple episode is more than enough. Okay, so the FNAF movie is uh, leaving Peacock, and it's going to Amazon Prime. Oh, that's interesting to hear. Amazon Prime. Okay, we got a bear. We got a rabbit. We got a chick. A chicken. And we got a fox. You got all four characters.
Alrighty, so I got time for a couple more questions. Cave Cat is back. <laughs> the bite of 87. <laughs> if flaming hot Cheetos are hot, I wonder how hot flaming flaming hot Cheetos would be. I don't know. Would it be hotter than the one chip challenge? Oh. But I really like flaming hot Cheetos. They're like my go to chips. My go to Cheetos. And that's what I named my small fry over here. I named them hot Cheetos. <laughs> regular Cheetos all the way. I mean, I wouldn't mind regular Cheetos, but the flaming Hot Cheetos are my go-to Cheetos. Yeah, Doritos are good. I like Doritos also. Junior Boy to the rescue. It's her stepsister's favorite. That's cool. Alright, so instead of Cheeto, what did you name your cat? I'm curious. By the way, I would like to have a cat someday. Just not now because, you know. My family doesn't like cats. They've always been dog lovers, dog people. Yeah, dog people's more appropriate to say. I grew up with dogs. And it's like Yeah, I have I have my Chihuahua dog here, Chica. That's her name. I like that she's small and she gets to stay small. I don't like big dogs. They take up too much space. So, if I was to get my own place, I'd like to get a cat. I want something different for a change. Or even a hamster. I'll settle for a hamster. Okay, favorite chips, Ruffles, Pringles, Cheetos, Fritos. Yeah, I used to have a rabbit too. And I used to have a guinea pig. My rabbit lived for, for a good while, and then it passed away. I had a guinea pig for like a year or two, but then for some reason... My dad got rid of it and sold it to an, another person. Just like, Dad, why did you do that? Oh, so your cat's name is Toothless. Oh, that's cute. Uh, I've never had fish before. For me, fish are boring. They just, they swim in a tank and it's like, and that's it. Like, you don't get to cuddle cuddle them. You don't get to play with them. 
it's like, eh, just no. I look like I'm in my 20s. Yeah. I used to have a hamster for like two years and then it passed away. Yeah. All right, so I think we have time for one more question. So let's get in the chat. If you have a question, we need that one more question. Da -da -da -da. Thoughts on Garbage Pail Kids? Um, not too familiar with that. Not too familiar with that franchise. Come on, I want to talk about something. Let's, let's get something in the chat. Any more questions? Questions. Where are the questions? Are they down here? Are they up here? Okay, here's a good question, which we'll end up, which we'll end the stream with. Do you think that the Larry Boy movie will live up to the hype? Um... The way things are right now, no. However, I would like it to be like, I would like for the movie to live up to the hype. But as far as things stand right now, it's like, we don't know. It's like, we don't know. Because Big Idea NBCU, they're not being transparent with us. They're not talking to us. They're not communicating with us. They're not showing us anything. And that's why I made that poll on Twitter. It was like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Are they just twiddling their thumbs? Are they working on the movie? Or are they just asleep right now? And you know what? It took them a while to actually update their, their Instagram and Twitter like from their winter banner to their Easter banner. It's like, what is going on? Like, they're so freaking late when it comes to, like, when it comes to trends. Like, even when it comes to, like, the time of year. Like, it took them, what was it, a couple of months to go from their winter banner to their Easter banner? And I pointed this out on Twitter as, like, okay, maybe change your, because they had like a post, they pinned a post where they were like, okay, happy birthday to the February babies. They had that, they had that post pinned, but then like this month was March babies, happy birthday to people in March, but they didn't have it pinned. The February babies post were, was pinned. So I was like, okay, well, can you pin the March, happy birthday March post onto your page? Like replace the February with March? And of course I didn't get a comment or a response. It was like, they're so freaking late when it comes to their social media stuff. And you could say, well, their social media departments run on autopilot, but if it if that's the case, then their autopilot sucks because they're always posting stuff late and they're always rehashing some of their material and putting up clips from VeggieTales episodes. So their content is either late or it's stale and keep in mind like whoever's working their social media accounts or whatever 
they ha they have to be getting paid. So they're essentially getting paid to make all these mistakes or the company just doesn't give a shit at this point. All right. So going back to your question, Blu-ray Dave, um, I would like for the movie to live up to the hype, but it's not guaranteed. Having that guarantee means that, for one, Phil and Mike are back with VeggieTales, and plus, we have a company that listens to fans, and we have a CEO that cares about us cares about the fans, cares about the franchise. And it's and it's sad because I I've, I've been wanting a Larry Boy movie for years. Trust me on that. I've been wanting a Larry Boy movie for years. I've always said, "Hey, Larry Boy should have a theatrical movie." It's like it's long overdue. I've said that for years, and it's like, okay, we're getting a movie, but it's like, all right, show us something. Like, get us hyped. Give us a teaser. Even if it's just concept art. Or giving, or like, show us a video saying that you're working on it. It was like they have nothing to show for. And you know what? Their their original post, you know that Larry Boy Begins post that I was that I was complaining about? Like, what was it, last month? It's been over a month now. And that in that incident where they um posted the Larry Boy Begins um uh, post, but then they delete it and then they put it back up with the only difference being that the begins part was 86 like they got rid of the the begins part it was like again who's running their their social media department right now it can't be on autopilot because if it was on autopilot then it's not doing a good job being an autopilot you know what I'm saying it's it's just crazy You think that Universal would be fair to both the original creators and the fans? No, they are not. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing this shit. They wouldn't be making mistakes left and right. They wouldn't have fired Phil and Mike. The saddest thing is that uh, Phil and Mike created VeggieTales. Like, in the 90s. Like, they poured their heart and soul out to make VeggieTales. It's like Big Idea and NBCU have Phil and Mike to thank. And how do they thank them? By firing them. And calling VeggieTales a preschool show. Ooh. Yeah, they definitely got inspiration from the Dark Knight trilogy. The Larry Boy. The Larry Boy Returns. Yeah, they definitely disrespected Phil and Mike. I mean, and they made no effort to make things right. That's the reality that we live in. So, yeah, I think we had a really good uh, Q&A. Uh, good stream. We had a lot to talk about. And yeah, like I was saying, tomorrow I'm going to be doing a live reading of these. We're going to dissect these comics. And see how terrible they are. Oh my god, this looks lazily drawn. I could do better art than this. I mean, look at this. It is so stupid. I mean, 
who in their right mind would give this to their kids? Perfect for early readers. Because again, oh, this is preschool. Preschool. So this is going to be a sight to see in tomorrow's stream. So anyways, yeah. I'm going to be going live tomorrow. Tomorrow. So be sure to click on notifications, turn them on, ding the dong to get notifications when I'm when I upload a video and when I'm going live. So anyways, this was a really great uh, Q&A. Uh, thank you for tuning in and be sure to like the stream, subscribe to the channel if you want to support the show, the Larry Boy Fanatic YouTube channel because we're no longer posting on TikTok until the TikTok t situation gets sorted out at the very least or it's gone. So if you want to support the show even further, there is Patreon or becoming a channel member or I have my Ko-Fi linked in the description if you want to leave a tip or something. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, DeviantArt, and all that to bang bang Yeah, I need to get back to doing the all that to bang bang podcast. I need topics, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for more content, because there's a lot to be had. <laughs> Alrighty, so you guys have a great weekend. And if you're going to tune into the live stream tomorrow, see you tomorrow. Anyways, it's been your girl, Larry Boy Fanatic. The eyes and plunger ears of the Larry Boy Multiverse. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. Thank you, Blu-ray Dave. Alrighty, say bye to the camera. Say bye to the people. Mm. Bye bye. And happy birthday, Junior Boy Plushie. He's two years old now. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> See you guys. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da.